If a patient presents with lateral elbow pain, it's possible they have lateral epicondylitis, lateral epicondylosis, or lateral epicondalgia. In order to differentiate these different symptoms and diagnoses, it's important for the clinician to take the climber through a various set of movements and screens. First, to lengthen the muscles, going through flexion and ulnar deviation to see if that generates symptoms. Next, to palpate the tendinous insertion to see if that generates lateral elbow pain. And finally, to go through a muscle screen, extensor digiti minimi, extensor digitorum, extensor carpi radialis brevis, extensor carpi ulnaris, as well as the supinator. There's one other muscle to keep in mind if a climber has lateral elbow pain, the anconius muscle. It aids in end range elbow extension. It attaches to the lateral epicondyle, and if a climber has lateral elbow pain that radiates more proximally, this muscle should be on your list. But if you think about different climbing movements that would generate or aggravate typical lateral epicondylosis, it's oftentimes movements that overuse extended wrist positions, such as the overuse of crimps, or gripping with an extended wrist, or even chicken winging while climbing, or using wide cracks. These are all movements that may generate pain and symptoms in the lateral elbow. In order to rule up or down this diagnosis, you can perform a quick screen of the main muscles involved. Let's go ahead and take a look at this screen. The muscles that extend your wrists and fingers back, as well as rotate your palm upward, attach into a location on the outside of your elbow known as the lateral epicondyle. These muscles include the wrist extensors, extensor carpi radialis brevis, and extensor carpi ulnaris, the finger extensors, extensor digitorum, and extensor digiti minimi, and the supinator muscle. There's one additional muscle that attaches to the lateral epicondyle, and this is the aconius. This muscle aids in extending or straightening the elbow, but for the purposes of this video, because that muscle isn't used that much in function, we won't discuss that muscle further in the cluster. We're going to do a series of tests for lateral epicondylosis or outside elbow pain, also known as tennis elbow. You want to make sure the patient has no pain or symptoms. These are provocative tests. These are going to reproduce their symptoms. So before we start, just make sure they're pain free. Then we're going to go through the tests. And the first test is a passive stretch. I'm going to put the patient up into 90 degrees of humeral flexion. I'm going to grasp on to the distal aspect of their humerus. I'm going to flex their wrist down towards the ground. You can even move them a little bit towards that pinky side and ulnar deviation to see if you can reproduce some of that outside elbow pain. It's a passive test. The next set of tests are active tests, testing the contraction of the muscle to see if contracting the muscle reproduces pain on the outside of the elbow. So this is called Cozen's test. You're gonna place the patient at 90 degrees of elbow flexion. You're gonna stabilize the distal end of their radius and their ulna. You're then going to have them extend their wrist back. You can even move them a little bit towards that thumb side in what's called radial deviation. I'm then gonna come in and press the patient downwards towards the ground. They're gonna resist me. And we're now testing the wrist extensor muscles to see if that reproduces any pain or symptoms on the outside of the elbow. And now we're gonna to test to see if the supinator muscle is generating any pain or symptoms. The patient can go into supination with their palm upwards. I can stabilize at the elbow, and then I can come in with my hand, and I'm gonna be turning Artem into pronation, or trying to press his palm down towards the ground, and he's gonna turn on his supinator muscle to try and keep his palm lifted. Keep him in that position. Artem, don't let me turn you, and hold, hold, hold. Hold. You can test his finger extensors to see if that generates any symptoms at his lateral epicondyle. So I can come in and apply pressure on the distal end of his finger or the tip of his finger. Don't let me move you. Hold, hold, hold. Excellent. You can actually do that on each finger to see if that generates his symptoms. Now there's one last test when he's in this position. We can relax his palm down. I'm going to come in and trace the extensor mass of the elbows right into their insertion 
into the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, and I'm going to palpate or press in that position to see if that elicits or causes any pain or symptoms.